Do you remember when you got her? You had hours and hours to just drive and dream. You spent your Saturdays fixing whatever needed fixing just to keep her running right. 20 years later, isn't it time you two got reacquainted? When you're ready, we're here. Because at LMC Truck, we know that while time may have passed, your passion for her never faded. Get her back on the road where she and you belong. In gears brought to you by LMC truck keep them on the road if you're a car person you have probably seen the movie Ford versus Ferrari it tells the story of how Ford and Carroll Shelby and other key people created the Ford GT40 that dominated Le Mans in the late 1960s <laughs> and it is a great story but it's not the whole story because Carroll Shelby had already set the world on fire with his Ford-powered Cobra just a few years before. But the Cobra wasn't the only game in town because there was Lister and Devon and Kellison that were all jumping into sports car racing. And even Chevrolet was getting tired of all those Cobras beating their Corvettes. So in 1963, they contracted Bill Thomas to covertly build a car with one purpose in mind, beat the Cobra. The result was one of the most outlandish and brutally fast sports cars to ever hit the racetrack. It was called the Cheetah. Don Edmonds, the, the designer of the vehicle, uh, the, the chief designer of the vehicle, had a very good eye for shapes. Very, very sharp on the fabrication side. He built 500 plus cars in his very storied history. Uh, showed me some old school techniques on fabrication. I would like to build the Cheetah eventually myself. Unleashed in the 1964 racing season, and with just a handful made, the Gullwing Door Cheetah was so unique and blisteringly fast that it became a legend immediately on the track. It was also incredibly popular in the slot car and model world, so most kids grew up knowing what they were. But very few had ever seen a real one until we showcased this original Cheetah a few years ago the very car that was clocked at 215 miles an hour at Daytona in 64. When Bud found out that it was how fast he was going, next time he came in, he wasn't clocked near as fast. <laughs> Gene Crow, the mechanic, asked him, was there a problem, did they need to change gearing or and he says, no, he says, the tack just won't get up there anymore. <laughs> My opinion on the car is if it had received factory backing, uh, the Copers would have been in deep trouble. Now, the reason we did that was to not only tell the unique story of the Cheetah and introduce it to a whole new generation, but to also start building a modern, updated version of this iconic car using a body and chassis from Cheetah Evolution. The Cheetah Evolution cars start out as a pile of steel tubing from Blue Arc Fab, and the first thing they do is cut the tubing to length for the main frame structure. And these measurements are extremely precise because this is the foundation that the whole car is gonna be built on. As with any top-level tube frame construction, any place where two tubes are going to connect has to be notched so the tubes will fit together properly with no big gaps. This will allow good, strong welds at the joints. And each piece is tweaked and measured and further fit until everything is exactly where it needs to be. Finally, once all the pieces are assembled and tack welded in place, 
it's time for finished welding. And all the joints are TIG welded to make sure it's strong and rigid and ready to rock. Once we had the chassis laid out, we moved on to the drivetrain and combined over 600 horsepower with six speeds. <laughs> Then we moved on to other unique features like special headers, interior parts, vents, and door latches. At this point, we were ready for paint and body. And with my paint booth backlog for the next year or so, I called up my friends at Sparkburn Hot Rods in Kansas because their work is top notch. And I walked James through all of the things that I wanted him to do to this car. Yeah, if you want to come in, you know, build some sort of a bulge, yeah, it kind of covers this, you know, based off of this cover, that would be awesome. Then we loaded it up and it went to Kansas for a long time because quality paint takes time. The color that it's going, I would agree with you that that is the color that it should be. I mean, it, it, uh, it stands out. Yeah. You know, it'll be bold. But eventually, every project and every task will get done if you stick with it. And the paint on the Cheetah is no exception. So it's time to pull the cover off and show you the new skin we put on this car. Now obviously, this is the end result of a lot of work, and it's really hard to appreciate all this until you understand the journey that it took to get here. So we're going to walk you through it once you're done drooling. <laughs> Welcome back to Gears, where we have just pulled the cover off of our Cheetah to show the paint job that the guys at Sparkburn Hot Rods laid on the flanks. But before they could shoot any color on this thing, first they had to remove the body from the chassis and start smoothing out the fiberglass and fitting the doors. Now while that was going on, the chassis needed to be sanded down and repainted. Fortunately, James has a connection with the local Hispanic bike club that teaches kids how to build cool custom bikes. I myself grew up in California. I grew up out low riding. I used to build low rider bikes when I was a kid. And so I knew that these kids really kind of liked that, you know, uh, lifestyle and the cars and things like that. So I, I got a small grant uh, from our Olathe Public Schools Foundation and I was able to buy some bikes. I uh, built one and I just kind of sat at one of the high schools and showed it off to the kids and they would be like, oh, that's awesome. I'd be like, hey man, if you want to build one, all you have to do is come in after school and work on it on Mondays. Um, and that really uh, stuck because the kids weren't coming to talk about their feelings, they weren't coming in to talk about homework, they were coming in to work on bikes. But when they get here, you know, we, we discuss things with them. Uh, we talk about how they're feeling, we talk about their grades, and uh, the mentors that are here, everybody uh, is a volunteer. Nobody gets paid, including myself, which is super important. We're here because we care about the kids. I love how it just evolved to just, you know, us working with the community, us working with cops, trying to break that stereotype of us just being in trouble all the time. And when we asked them, they were more than eager to lend their helping hands to the sanding process of the chassis. This not only gave the kids a chance to work on something bigger than a bicycle, but also introduced them to the world of custom cars and the Cheetah's crazy history. And to me, the hands and sweat and DNA of a bunch of future hot rodders is the best primer we could have put on this car. It's what keeps this industry moving forward.
Now, the hood was an area that needed some attention because not only had I cut the hood for the injector stacks to poke through, but we also added air vents to both sides of the center openings to help pull that hot air off of those headers. But I figured we still needed some more airflow. So I had James build an extractor scoop into the center of the hood like a Corvette has to vent air from the radiator. This will help remove heat from under the hood and it just looks awesome. Another area that was always unique about the Cheetah were the sides of the car because the body actually wraps down under the chassis, which looks cool, but it made it hard to raise the hood and the side pipes always looked kind of unfinished. So we cut the bottom of the hood off, level with the body to create a common body line. Then worked with James to build a removable panel to continue the body down under the chassis and also form a bulge to blend the body into the side pipe. This really finishes off the look of the car down here without messing up this cool body line. Now obviously, I still have some latches to come up with and a few other things, but this gives you an idea of how this thing's gonna look. Now, the headlights were always another issue on the Cheetahs because the openings were so small. But Andy at Sparkburn came up with a really cool solution with these motorcycle headlights that fit the openings perfectly. Now, once I get the mounting tabs for the covers built, we will have modern lighting in a vintage headlight bucket. That's cool. To latch the hood, I wanted something a little slicker than the typical Zeus fasteners. So we got these quick latch clips from Speedway Motors that lock and unlock with the push of a button. Now obviously, door fitment is key, especially on a gullwing door car, since that is a focal point. So the guys spent plenty of time there as well. Hey, welcome back to Gears, where we are walking you through the paint and the interior of our modern day Cheetah. Now, Bill Thomas's original vision for the Cheetah was to build street versions with plexiglass windows and nice interiors like Carol Shelby did with the Cobra. And Cheetah Evolution has these plexiglass windows, but it's up to you, the builder, to fit them and make them look good. So, while the doors were being fitted, it was the perfect time to fabricate some aluminum trim pieces to hold the windows in place, cover the door latches, and add a nice level of refinement. This is really cool. To finish out the doors, we brought in upholstery wizard, James Jansen, from Seems to be Upholstery. And he covered the door panels in the same distressed leather that we put on the dash and seats. But we didn't stop there. We also had him continue with the headliner, the passenger area, and the rear shelf area as well. Now, due to the interior space limitations on a 90-inch wheelbase car that has the motor basically in your lap, you know, here's the, here's the cool thing about this. For ladies that want their husbands to say fit and trim, you get them a cheetah. Because they can't get fat because they can't fit in a car. <laughs> That's the biggest incentive, man. It's like, I'll I, I be doing salads lately now, man. I got I to gotta fit in my car, man. I don't care about you. I got to fit in my car. The console is another area where things get tight. So to get clearance for my leg, it was necessary to build a dent into the console so my leg wouldn't contact the steering wheel. This was also upholstered along with the center console to add a nice level of comfort into a wild and wooly car. And now the big question, what color is this? A lot of people think that it's a candy blue over a silver base coat and you're close. But this is not a three-stage candy color. This is a two-stage base clear from Exalta's candy base coat color line, and it's called Blue Moon. So yeah, you can buy this color. And the fact that it's a two-stage base clear means it's easier to shoot and easier to touch up. 
Now, obviously, I still have a lot of stuff to do to this car. I need to detail the motor, I need to wire it, I need to do the plumbing, I need to do the air conditioning system, all that stuff. But, like I said before, every step that you make forward on your project is one step closer to turning the key and driving. And now, the Gladiator Search and Rescue Build, powered by Best Top. You know, there's an old saying that man's best friend is his dog, and there is some truth to that. Even if you're a cat person, you get this. Because if you get lost and need help finding your way home, people send out a rescue dog, not a rescue cat. And since this is a search and rescue vehicle, we thought it was only natural that we tie it in with this great charity called Sardis. Now, what is Sardis? Well, it stands for Search and Rescue Dogs of the United States. Check it out. Using dogs in search and rescue operations has been around for a long time. But it wasn't until the chaos of the earthquake in Mexico City in 1985 that rescue dog organizations realized that they needed to establish a national disaster dog standard. So a group of handlers and organizations got together and created Sardis to give the proper training and development for rescue dogs and their handlers. Using primarily dogs from animal shelters, Sardis has provided training clinics in Colorado, Montana, Michigan, Kansas, and many other states. And they train dogs and handlers in specific search skills, like wilderness trailing for lost hikers or climbers, urban rescue for missing persons in cities, avalanche and fire rescue, disaster search for hurricanes or tornadoes, and of course, crime scene searches. They've also teamed up with the Returning Soldier Initiative to pair returning soldiers with rescue dogs, where the team not only benefits from the soldier's skills and training, but also it helps the soldier deal with PTSD and make the transition to civilian life. The best part is, if this is something that you're interested in for your area, or you know a soldier that might be, Sardis is always looking for people to start up a new chapter. So get in touch with them, and who knows, we may see you driving this Gladiator around. And now, Parts Bin. Everybody knows that the right wheels can absolutely make or break a project. And there's some wheels that look good no matter what you put them on. The trick is finding those wheels and not spending a fortune for them. Well, Rocket Racing Wheels has got a whole line of wheels that nail the classic look, but not your wallet. For example, this is called the injector wheel, and it's obviously just a great aluminum hot rod wheel. And whether you go fully polished or cast, it's going to be perfect on a classic hot rod or muscle car. Now, if you're more into the pro touring thing, they've got those too. This is the attack wheel, and this is what they call a semi-forged design, which gives you the light weight and the strength of a forged wheel without the cost. And of course, it's got the right look too. So with any rocket racing wheel, you can get different bolt patterns, you can get different back spacings, polishing, powder coating, so you can dial in what you want. So if you need those special wheels, Rocket Racing's got them. What are you working on? Brought to you by Woodward Fabrication, selling quality metalworking equipment since 1966. Today's What Are You Working On comes from Adam and Ridge Simpson, and they are from down the road in Columbia, Tennessee, and their project is very unique because Ridge is only six years old. And Adam says he has been a huge fan of monster trucks since he was one and a half. So Adam decided he wanted to build Ridge a go-kart, so they started it two years ago. But Ridge was like, Dad, I want a go-kart that's a monster truck go-kart. Yeah. So Adam got busy. Now check this out. 
As you can see, they started with a Manco cart, but he might as well have not because he cut it all to pieces. He built a custom chassis. He put in the center steering. He put in hydraulic brakes. He changed the axle to accept split style gear for easy gear ratio changes. And then he changed the hubs to accept a common four wheeler lug pattern. So that took care of the wheels and tires. But then the body, check this out. They built body panels that are held in place with Zeus fasteners, just like the big rigs. And it was all wrapped and painted. And this thing even has a fake blower scoop and functional zoomies. Is that cool or what? Now he says that they got it done just in time for Ridge's sixth birthday, and they've been out testing it ever since. Yeah, I bet. Adam, I know you're driving that thing too, man. I would be. Everybody in here be driving that thing. Guys, what a great project. So to recognize that, we're going to hook you up with one of these shears from Woodward Fab because obviously you do a lot of metal work. This is always going to come in handy. Then you're obviously a couple of gear heads, so we're going to give you guys a couple of gears t-shirts. Then we're going to give you a project planning book so you can keep track of everything you've done on that go-kart and everything you are going to do on that go-kart. And then we're going to give you a gift card from LMC Truck because there's all kinds of cool stuff in there. You're going to need something out of that catalog, I guarantee you. And Ridge, since you're a monster truck fan, we're going to give you a Sergeant Rock die cast. Now, it's not quite a monster truck, but it's pretty close. Now, for the rest of you guys, if you want to get in on this, get your project featured on the show, go to the website, go to Gears Nation, and submit it into what you're working on. The website's also the place to find out more information on any products you may have seen on the show, any Gears merchandise, and how to join Gears Nation so you can stream any of our episodes commercial free. Also, don't forget to check us out on Amazon Prime where you can watch past and current seasons of Gears and check out our new show, Stacy David's Restoration Series. Finally, don't forget to like us on Facebook and Instagram so you can get some behind the scenes footage of our weekly web series, Shifting Gears. And if you're a radio person, make sure you check out our new podcast, Tales of a Gearhead. All right, that wraps it up for us today. Adam and Ridge have a cool go-kart to go play with. You, you could find something like this, grab that engine and build your own go-kart, not spend a whole lot of money. There's a lot of options out there. So get out there, get something, start working on it. We'll see you next time.